Scaling and moving text around the screen can be great to create visual interest in your text animations. In Camtasia, you have behaviors that have predefined animation effects with motion and movement. But if you want to create something totally custom, you'll want to explore using the custom animation feature along with setting various visual properties to get the custom result you desire. Today, not only are you going to see how to make this cool layered text effect, but you'll also learn the techniques I use to reverse engineer a design and recreate it right here inside Camtasia. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. For the example in this video, I got my inspiration from watching the video Quantum Thoughts, We Create Our Own Reality by Dr. Amit Goswami. I just really loved the text layering, scaling, and movement ideas that were shown in this video. Now let's quickly walk through the series of steps I go through to reverse engineer this creation and produce the finished result in Camtasia. Step one is to analyze the design elements. As you can see here, we have our uh, little demo example. We're going to play it a couple of times. See, there's lots of words coming on and they're growing and there's drop shadow effects. And let's play it once more just to get a quick feel for it. Okay, see all the movement and it's just not like one straight line and there it's all kinds of movement going on. So let's just break that down quickly. So first we start off, as you can see, we have a motion background and it has a kind of glow effect. So we're going to try to get something similar to that. I want you to also observe, you see the word love and there's like a little drop shadow, black drop shadow around it. So we want to have that, which helps the letters stand out from the background. Another feature we see is there's like big, big bold letters that uh, are being used for the text uh, that gets animated. And then if we go on, you can see we have a pivot move there on the, the that flips the word love on its side. And then we have the other words slowly coming in and they're scaling up and then they're, um, going towards the middle and then scrolling up. So if you see the word beauty here, it comes along and then it grows big and then it scale, scrolls up through the top, just like the other words that follow. I also want you to notice that the words start very small and then they grow. So let's just see how that unfolds. So here the word love comes in as like it just drops out from the top with like, a, seems like an opacity a change in in the lettering because it's not fully uh, solid until it lands and then when the next words start to come in you see justice is coming up here it looks like it's a drift in from the bottom and then the text scales up and then beauty look at that it starts very small the word and then it scales up comes into the, about the middle and then it'll it'll go up to the top but just following there see the word truth it's small scales up and then it follows up the top goodness likewise. So the rest of the words do a very similar thing, but then there's one more feature here as the we get towards the end, you can notice that the background freezes and it's like a zoom in till we get to see wholeness and abundance in full. And then there's like a transition effect that's gonna appear here now, where we see like a filter comes in, it's white, it has a, like a translucent look to it a bit and then it gets um, you know more whited out but that's when the transition happens and then we get the transparency fading as we go into the next scene so there's a whole bunch going on just wanted to look at it and break it down and there you have it step two is create your assets in this uh, demo example that we're working with there's really only a couple assets one asset is a text annotation and the other one is uh, a motion background that has a nice little glow effect added. So what we're going to do is bring in a text annotation, this one here, and then we're going to um, update to the font that we're using. I did a little research to find something similar to what was here in the demo and uh, there's a font called BERT Medium. So I'm going to change our font to be that, which I've already installed on my system, BERT Medium. So I change that and then I'm going to just click outside here and just bring this up a bit and I'm going to key in our word love in caps. I'm going to just sort of stretch our bounding box and then try and max out our size at 500. 
And as we can see, if I move that into place, it's pretty much the size we need. So it's pretty close. So that's, you know, taking care of our font. And then you can see there's a drop shadow, which will be applied. And then the second item was our abstract background, which I got um, through the TechSmith Camtasia assets, which is kind of nice. And the only other thing uh, I did with that was add on the uh, visual effect of glow, which, you know, gives that a nice little spike on some of the elements, which we kind of have here too. It's really bright there, but we just, you know, added a little bit of glow. The defaults are kind of fine. If you want to increase that intensity, you could just up it a little bit over here. So that's pretty easy to do. And, and that's it. And the TechSmith assets, if you're not familiar with, are right here. And, um, you can get this by going to the TechSmith site and under videos, I selected motion backgrounds and I filtered a bit. I added abstract here in HD only and uh, did uh, an apply and up came all of these options. And here's the one we chose. Step three is build out the text animations. And the way I wanted to do this was to go and show you word by word that we, we get on our um, demo example and just show you some of the nuances in there. But the word love, our very first one, has, you know, some uh, a lot of key principles that I'm going to explain. So let's just look at this one in a little more detail than the others. So to start with, I'm going to add on a text annotation, which is just, you know, going through annotations here. And in my case, I just chose this annotation. But I already have two examples on here. I felt it wasn't it wasn't necessary to go through and show you how I you know change the font, set the size, etc. Because these are basics. The key to our lesson today is to learn about keyframes and how um, we address how many frames we we need or not to get the kind of smoothness or organic feel to the animation that we want. And you know. This is where the creativity comes in and playing with uh, Camtasia's animation capabilities. So I'm going to close off the second one here, which you can see has more keyframes, which is going to be more organic and more natural and more uh, in alignment with what the uh, a demo example is. But first, I'm going to show you that you could do it with just a few um, keyframes. So the first keyframe I put in here, you know, we're using the text um, nice and big at 500 in the font for the word love and it drops in and then um, in the next keyframe the motion ends over here in um, the pivoted 90 degree position and you can see that by the fact that we have a Z rotation whereas in the beginning it was at zero and I adjusted the Z rotation to go to 90 and you can just change that by playing with the dial or changing the number so if it was at 80 you can see it, it's not quite aligned there on the left side. So let's put that back to 90. So, you know, things things look right. And then at the end, uh, things are off screen. So you can see that the animation um, shrinks a bit and then goes off screen off the top. So here I just did it with three um, keyframes of a certain durations and tried to match stuff. But as you can see here, in, as, as it's pivoting, the match, it's kind of way off right? So maybe if we had a few more keyframes and a little more frequently and played with the easing, we may get a better tracking management of that. And that's what we got in our second example. So I'm going to go there and show that. So now we have love here and you can see, again, compared to the first one, there's a few more added keyframes and you're going to see we played with the easing a little. But now watch, see how this tracks a little better as the pivot happens. It's pretty close and as it shrinks and goes off, it's not a bad match altogether. So if I just play that through, you Love, can see justice, beauty, truth. That tracks pretty well, doesn't it? So let's look at a few of the um, elements here. So if we go to the end of the first keyframe and that tight duration, that's right at the bottom where it does the drop. So you can see our Z rotation zero scaling, but our is uh, hasn't changed and our size is at 500. Now, as we go along, I decided to put that first keyframe uh, point where the peak of the pivot is. So if you notice, if I go any higher, it acts uh, any further, it starts to come down. So I chose that peak point as an, an added uh, element. And I, if you look here, we have 58 degrees on our Z rotation. So I adjusted the Z rotation and twisted the word, you know, and, you know, moved it around and got it lined up with the rotation. So it was nicely aligned there. Then our next point would be the completion of the pivot. 
and you can see that by the characteristic of the 90 degrees value here now and then the next one I started to track along so it, it's shrinking a bit and moves to a certain point before it starts to scroll in a more consistent straight manner so I just did a shorter keyframe for that duration and then one for it close to being off and then off the top of the screen here as you can see it but one key thing to note is that you know the fonts changing throughout the cycle so if we look here and we look at the visual properties um, sorry for that in this case I did it with the size of the the font so it went from 500 it stayed at 500 there went down to 332 because now you can see it shrunk then down to 320 and then it stayed at 320 to go off so in this case I managed it through managing the size but I'm gonna recommend we stick with scaling because it seems to be more reliable for keyframe end changes and you're gonna see that in a minute so that's how we kind of manage that but the last core trick is look at the easing so in order to get things to mimic if you if you look here if I did a right mouse button on the red point here at the end keyframe I click enable easing you can see it's auto auto means it also defaults to exponential in and out easing and I'm going to show you what the different types look like so that's exponential in the second one I went to linear okay and then in the third one uh, the enable easing is back to auto and then in the fourth whoops I accidentally created a marker let's get rid of that in the fourth the enable easing is back to linear and then the last one is back to auto there's a page on um, a TechSmith on the TechSmith website that has a tutorial that gives you a nice visualization of, of the different easing settings so let's take a quick look at that so here we are on the site in a little animations tutorial and as you can see with exponential you know consider that the timeline going from left to right is the same time and they all end up parked there at, at approximately the same time but notice the paths are a little different linear is the same speed all the way across exponential comparatively starts out slow and then finishes faster while bounce and spring are you know really fast moving and then they have some subtleties on on the end so in our case we were using either exponential which um, as it shows here defaults to exponential easing we were using exponential or auto and linear we didn't really use the other ones so for the rest of the tutorial I went word by word and set up all the keyframes so the first one's love and then the second one's uh, justice you can see there up at the top and then beauty etc and then I assembled all the elements together in the final end with uh, the proper background and you're gonna see how that turns out so we're just gonna look at one or two more because I want you to see how I adjusted some of the visual properties so we did the first one which was love so now I'm just gonna zoom in and we're gonna look at the second one in a little more detail and so now we're working with the second word justice and I brought the text the annotation on at where it first appeared so if you see if I go to the frame before it's not there then it appears here so I put the um, annotation on screen and sized it approximately and came up with that match so then I was looking for the next move and then uh, that happened there so I added a keyframe and then matched an end keyframe position here and if you look under the scaling I actually went from 100 percent to 122 so I, I played with things through the scaling with the end keyframe points because it, it's a quite easy to operate and nice and precise so I just did a, an undo so I didn't affect that and then the next move position point I tried to lock into was right there now you can see that I adjusted the scale to 138.8 that's where it, it, it's approximate and again that's just done by visual matching and I do that and you can see the numbers will, will, will would uh, settle by that after I, I did this the scaling and the Z value um, if, as you can see in this case is minus 23.3 but when I go to the next point where I matched it went to zero and that's all done just by doing this visually and moving things on screen okay then the next move point I had was here and then as it started to move to the left okay you can see it also was shrinking so if I went here now and checked at this position 
you can see that the scaling has gone to 184. I'll just look at the scaling for the rest of the pieces so you can see what happens. When Now it's 151 and then uh, it's 134. Also look at the easing. Remember we looked at the easing when we did looked at the word love. So it was at auto for that point there. And then you're going to see here. Next up was the word beauty. And as you can see, I have a, it seems to be a lot more keyframes. And that's because if you look, the, the word beauty comes in way down at the bottom as something very small. So there's a lot of scaling. You can see the visual property went scaling up to 138. And then the next keyframe where I added it to 224. So you notice if I, if I slide up or down, you see that just adjusts the scaling and I did it to match. I tried to use horizontal spacing. But what you'll find is even if I can use that to tune it to match the, the um, exact location of the letters, the problem is the horizontal spacing stays the same value for the entire um, duration of the time that this, this text element is on screen. So consequently, I can't vary it from key end keyframe to end keyframe, which would have been required. But you can see the word beauty comes in. It's small, then it scales. Here now it's scaling again, 250, you know, 325. So the principles that you've seen so far applied in terms of the easing and working with the other visual properties like the rotation and scaling um, are pretty much, you know, universal what we had to do to apply to the rest of the words, goodness, and the next one was wholeness, and then abundance. But there's one more nuance, which I'm going to show you here in the final assembly. So I'm just going to zoom in and help us to look at things a little more closely. So after I was done, I slid them all together into a nice stack. And now you can see how it all plays out by the uh, the ones in behind. There's the ones in behind and above. And that's, that's you know, managed to be shown through we using opacity on the demo. We just sort of like set it down to the 50s. So you can hide and see, you know, whatever you want. And so that's how I did that. And the finished product, all I have to do is just hide out that, and we can see if I uh, scale it up, play it, we have my nice background in, and uh, look at how nice that is. So although it's not 100% mimicked, it's, it's pretty amazing, and it works. Don't underestimate the power of Camtasia to do custom animation and make things look cool. To finish things off, there were two cool features at the end. And I just want to show you, first you see that the, there's a motion in the background here, but as we get to the end, it sort of gets frozen and static and just zooms in at, 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 at a few different levels. And the way that was achieved was by adding the zooms in for the, the, the text elements, which was, was done. But on the bottom, you can see here, there's a little split point here, and that was actually an extend a frame, which I basically, you know, did a cut on the motion background and then just extended the frame the lat that last frame to be for the rest of the the example and then mimic the same zooms on the bottom here that were done at the top so it looks like everything moved in unison and the background was no longer moving that's one exact part and then the second part is there was a transition like scenario where uh, what I did is I put a, a white shape to cover the full canvas and then with that shape, I get the context here, originally the opacity was at 50% and then at this um, keyframe point I increased it to 75 and then went back to 50 and that's kind of like how it ended. Today we looked at how to use the custom animation visual effect with text to create some cool layered text messaging that scales and moves around the screen. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to show some more creative animation video effects like I shared today that you can use for creating in your videos. If you need any assistance with your YouTube content strategy or help with video editing or your Camtasia projects, be sure to reach out to me through Messenger or my website gordeisman.com and let's have a chat. See you in another video soon.